October the 5th, 1785, and of the said Thomas Jefferson at Paris, October the 11th of the same year, did appoint Thomas Barclay, agent in the business aforesaid, giving him the powers therein, which by said second commission we were authorized to give, and the said Thomas Barclay, in pursuance thereof, both arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between the United States of America and His uh, Majesty the Emperor of Morocco, and sealed with his royal seal, being translated into the language and said of said United States of America, together with the attestations thereto, annexed are in the following words to wit, in the name of Almighty God, this is a treaty of peace and friendship established between us and the United States of America, which is confirmed and which we have ordered to be written in the book and sealed with our royal seal at our court of Morocco in the 25th day of the blessed month of Shaban in the year 1200, trusting in God, it will remain permanent. 1787. two years before the adoption of the Constitution and sealed and protected in Article 6 of that Constitution for governance of the United States of America North. Article 6, all debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges of every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. The Senators and the Representatives before mentioned, and the members of the several state legislatures and all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, several states, pardon me, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust of the United States. And that secures the law. Now, with the preamble, we the people of the United States, the first major party, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. And the obverse, or the principal seal, for the United States is the Great Pyramid, which you will see here. Giving or granting operative governmental authority to the several states of the United States constituting the Union of America. So the Great Seal is the pyramid, and the eagle, the flying bird, is of the United States. There's a dual seal for this jurisdiction. The issues that are presented to you today dealing with learning to live in contract is to understand what got you into the conflicts that caused this uh, lecture to be, i.e. people having to uh, discover that they've been uh, betrayed by persons in government, causing them to uh, take on a debt that they did not initiate themselves nor benefit from, i.e. the Federal Reserve System, etc., and also slaveholders who transferred through um, emancipation trading of persons held to forced servitude to Congress and Congress selling it under franchise to corporations. 
and then the corporations funding congressmen to betray the Constitution of the Republic. I want to read also Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution for the United States, North America. The United States shall guarantee to every state in the Union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. So the form of government established for operations in this Northwest Territories is a Republican form of government only. Anything else claimed by anyone in government is traitorous, a lie, false, and fraud. If a political head or anyone seating, sitting in any seat of government tells you that the government here is communism, a democracy, or anything else other than a republic, he is a traitor, a liar, a thief, and an enemy to the people and to the Constitution. If you develop or discover yourself in any issue of not having right to due process, it's probably because a demo is before you, as opposed to a Republican. And we don't mean the Whigs party Republican either, because they're demos too. We're talking about those who uphold the Constitution and the due process secured rights of the people embodied within that limited jurisdiction given to them or limited delegated authority. So you revert to that law, that is the supreme law of the land, and if you want to understand your contracts with government, you would measure them only by that constitution. Are we clear? Now the constitution itself is a contract between the people, quote unquote, the natural people, and the government, which is a fiction created to administrate institutional powers which are delegated authorities to operate government or to function for the securing of the society are we clear all institutions or corporate bodies organized to operate in government are technically fictions they may have personalities and characteristics but they are fictions when we make reference to the state we're making reference to any body political body politic which is organized to govern the affairs of the people it itself is a fiction and possesses no sovereignty whatsoever although you hear politicians also make statements relative to a sovereign state essentially that's a false premise only under the condition that it's a republican representative form of government absolutely and only representing the people by the plebiscite of the people. Outside of that, their artificial fiction, outside of any actions delegated to them by the Constitution, it's a fraud. And they're technically and factually racketeers and thieves. But doesn't the people neutralize, neutralize that same information? Because even though um, it's a republic, but they, people are acting, um, they want the democracy. So they're neutralizing the republic. The people do not know what they want. That's not something that the people want. Well, they never said that. Politicians have right, said that. Right. I mean, they go out to vote for these. these I'm going to qualify that again. What I just said. Okay. One of the one of the things. Let first of all, let me speak of one of the ministers' plenty potentiary. Now, pay attention to this. When I read to you, uh, when the treaty was being formed in Morocco, for the establishment of the United States as a sovereign power. And you must understand the Moors were the first government on the planet to recognize the United States. That's why whenever you measure any de jure law by the United States, world governments will all, always go to Morocco law or mention Morocco because you're in Morocco. Do you understand? The reason the United States, you say the United States of America doesn't have a national name because it's Morocco and because the United States now is an occupied government. People don't understand how we got to the point that we're at. For instance, like uh, all 
government heads know that the United States of America is Mexico. The United States of America is Brazil. The United States of America is El Salvador. Do you understand? Uh, there's multiple United States of America. But the United States of America in the central part of the North has no national name because it's an occupied territory. Although the principle of the establishment of this particular United States of America was established as a beacon light for the rest of the civilized world, but it was established as a result of hundreds of years' wars between Muslims and Christians in order to bring peace and civilization back to civilization which was falling apart. So you must understand what occurred, that's why you have the double seal, which is the pyramid, which is the sovereign seal, or the, the, the uh, supreme law, and then you have the flying bird, which, which is an eagle, which represents spirituality, etc., which is the several states. So the United States has a dual seal, and you must always keep that in mind. If you don't keep that in mind, you lose consciousness of what the mission of the United States Republic is for, which is really what has happened to the people. And I want to read something from the Minister of Plenty Potentiary, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, to, to give you some insight into what's happening to you right now. Uh, this is uh, Jefferson's opinion on the constitutionality, which you made reference to, Queen, of the bank. This is February 15th, 1791. The bill for establishing a national bank in 1791 undertakes, among other things, one, to form the subscribers into a corporation, and two, to enable them in their corporate capacity to receive grants of lands, and so far is against the laws of Mortmain. Number three to make alien sub subscribers capable of holding lands, and so far, it is against the laws of alienage. Four, to transmit these lands on the death of a proprietor to a certain line of successors, and so far, changes the course of descents. Five, to put the lands out of the reach of forfeiture, or, or as cheat, and so far is against the laws of forfeiture and as cheat. Six, to transmit personal chattels to successors in a certain line and so far is against the laws of distribution. Seven, to give them the sole and exclusive right of banking under the national authority and so far is against the laws of monopoly. Eight, to communicate to them a power to make laws paramount to the laws of the states, for so they must be construed to protect the institution from the control of the state legislatures, and so probably they will be construed. I consider the foundation of the Constitution as laid on this ground, that all powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are preserved to the states or to the people. To take a single step beyond the boundaries thus specifically or specially drawn around the powers of Congress is to take possession of a boundless field of power, no longer susceptible to any definition. The incorporation of a bank and the powers assumed by this bill have not, in my opinion, been de delegated to the United States by the Constitution, and that's in reference to such persons even then who were trying to establish what you see now, the Federal Reserve Principle. So this was early on. This is not new that was going on. And so you must understand that that Constitution, being in harmony with ancient Moabite law of the great peace, was to protect the people's sovereignty, which is why the United States was established in the first place. Problem. This was the problem. Due to the fact that certain European families did not honor the Republican form of government 
and did not want to honor the treaty and the supreme law of the land, sought systematically to overthrow the republican form of government. This was done also in all your southern states in order to maintain forced servitude. In doing so, they undermined the principle upon which this government was, was established. Problematic later on was the fact that many of the European families who sanctioned these actions because they were slaveholders did not expect for the traitors who were instituted within the government to turn, turn on them later on, which they did in the 30s. Do you understand? This is what we're dealing now with the success of those parties that Jefferson was condemning at that time. Are we clear? Now Jefferson was a third, 33rd, 360 degree Master Mason, as was Benjamin Franklin, a third, 33rd, 360 degree Master Mason, as was George Washington. George Washington was only a 33rd, though he was a general at the time under the early administration. He was a, a general under the administration of um, St. Clair. And under the St. Clair administration, uh, 1787 was when the treaty was formed that I, I, I read to you that preparatory statement. Um, and so if you don't know that connection, you cannot understand clearly the objections or the objectives that were uh, uh, sought for those who subverted the United States Republic. Now because they subverted the United States Republic, did not make the Constitution void. They just simply voided their part or their right to be a part of this union. That's all. So when you look at whereas um, any of the state representatives uh, may make any claims, even with the war powers, etc., these acts or trading with the enemy's acts where they, i.e., suspended habeas corpus or suspended the Constitution, no, they suspended themselves. The deal is they just maintain powers or maintain the power of the seat of government. And people get confused with thinking that because someone has a seat of government that therefore they're government. And therefore give them, i.e., the authority of that government. The only thing that gives anyone authority <clears throat> in government in these United States of North America is they honor the Constitution take an oath to uphold that Constitution and are held to that oath for this Republican form of government which represents all the people natural within the territories of the United States. Whereas, in order to maintain for servitude, they could not maintain for servitude on the Republican form of government. It would be in violation of divine law. It would be in violation of the preamble. It would be in violation of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. It would be in violation of the Articles of Confederation. It would be in violation of the Federalist Papers. It would be in violation of the Constitution. So they therefore systematically began to overthrow the Republican forms of government in all the southern states. This is in reference to what Lincoln had made reference to in 62 concerning the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, first draft, also the second draft in 63, and the final draft altered somewhat in 65. But what they discovered, um, that essentially they would have had to give the land back to the Moors, who they had branded Negroes, Blacks, and Colored, and Indians, in order to, to, to claim the land and maintain for servitude. And so whereas we had set the foundations for an honorable government, it was persons from the onset whose mission was to overthrow it in order to bring the Muslim world and the Christian world back into wars, which is what you see now taking place now in the Middle East, etc. And so most people don't know the relationship that is absolutely related to the establishment of the United States and betrayals from day one. Are we clear? If you don't understand that, you cannot defend yourself when you go before the tribunals of the demos who are pretending to be elected Republican government heads of the people. Are we clear? Now, no matter what party, whether they are Federalists, that they call themselves Democrats, or whether they're Wigger Moors, who call themselves Republicans, matters not. 
The form of government is Republican, representative of the people. Are we clear? What they instituted was not what you call the Democratic Party as you see it. The Demo Principle, which actually refers to the common peoples of Greece. And Demo is uh, uh, derived from what is known as Lesser God, which is also D-A-E-M-O-N, Damon, or what you call Demon. The institution of this particular form of government was to inflict injury against the sovereigns, meaning that it was old uh, enmity or old wounds unhealed, and it was with the intent that while the Moorish Empire was falling apart to uh, subvert and get rest or rest the rest of the empire in the Western Hemisphere or the Maghrib, El Aqsa, the extreme west where you're standing. Are we clear? So when you look at the Constitution, you look at the treaty, you look at the Federalist Papers, you look at the Articles of Confederation, etc., and their tie, and you look at 1787 with the treaty, and then you look at 1788 with the first uh, uh, beginning of the adopting the Constitution, the finalization, 1789, then, then uh, the, one of the ministers, plenipotentiary, uh, Ben Franklin, who was to be assigned pretor or president, uh, because the, the ministers plenipotentiary who were meeting with the Moors and setting up this government, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin, were to be presiding or pretors after the other seven or eight previous presidents, all right? And this was guaranteed by the Moors. But Benjamin Franklin was sick, and he could not hold that post. So what he did, he suggested that the Army General, George Washington, be placed in his stead. And Chief Justice Ben Bay agreed, who, who you know in history as ben, Benjamin Banneker. And they together taught George Washington ten uh, principles of government, because he wasn't too sure of himself either, but he was a Mason. So he had a fez, he knew the ancient Moorish principles, et cetera, of government. Um, and he took the job, and that's how he became the ninth president for the United States, North America. He was not the first, he was the ninth. But of course, in order for them to maintain forced servitude, they had to hide the history prior to the George Washington administration. So that's important for you to recognize that so that you can uh, follow the patterns of what they've done to undermine the republic. It wasn't, it wasn't the first Masonic president? The first Masonic president? No. All of them were Masons. No, what well, George Washington was the, the, um, the first of the, uh, what you would say, presiders, whereas most of the Moorish authority had been pushed aside. And it was prior to the George Washington administration, Moors were still still in sovereign power, generally, although the, the empire was weakening. But um, George Washington represents more or less what you call the turnover, which is why he's referred to by the subverters as the father of the country, which he's not. He's the, the pres he's, he represents that era where Moors pretty much lost most of their powers. Because at that time, they were starting to put Moors in, in forced servitude right in place. Meaning Moors were not really enslaved. Moors aren't slaves anyway. Slave is, is derived from Slavic. 